get an old FB stadium, which was a derby, mm-hmm. and it was the old stadium, right? Before they changed mm-hmm. And he said to me, we were standing with the mm-hmm. virtual suite, he said to me, so look at these people. And the stadium was full. He said, look mm-hmm. at these people. He said, this is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget those words. Mm-hmm. My dad always um, repeats the same thing. He always says, a group of people cannot all belong about you. If more than one person says something, you must listen. Um, so he's very good at repeating certain types of advice. Yeah. So that's one definite memory. It's unfortunate that it's linked to Chiefs. Yes. On, a, on another level, outside of Chiefs, an enduring um, memory of my dad's... Hey, I'm going to have to come back to you, I don't know. But one thing I'll tell you... <laughs> it means they're many, right? Yeah. Parting shot. You see, we only really got to spend time with my dad when we were, we were at school. He was like, then we were working. He was yeah. at night. Yeah. You know, my mom was the one that was always there. So yeah. we, by which we, being here cheap, just giving me the time to actually sit with him. Mm. And uh, there was a point that I was working in his team, yeah. right next to his office. So I had time with him. even being here. So we, we're spending more time yeah. with him now mm. as an adult than I have ever stopped to spend with him. Yeah. One thing I'll never forget, and I'll always say about my dad, he always says, and always said, when we came back from school with Fort Carter, he said, oh, that's good, eh? You did well. Mm-hmm. So we got a piece of my brain. That's why you've done so well. <laughs> that's so amazing. He says, you've got a piece of my brain, that's why you've done so well. I've yeah. never, that's always been something he's yeah. always said. He's like, no, it's good, it's good. But you've got a piece of my brain there. That's why you're, you're What does mommy say to that? Um, <laughs> she's just quiet in the background. Neither of them finished the trick, but they're amazing human beings. We are at Naturena Village, the home of Kaiser Chiefs, and uh, we are speaking to the man who started it all back in 1970. He's just been freshly inducted into the Hall of Fame, South African Hall of Fame. He is a man who was honored with an honorary doctorate by the University of Cape Town. Cape Town. His name is Kaiser Shinjakuluva Mutawun. Others call him Boy Boy. I'll ask him about that later. But Mr. Mutawun, thank you very much for giving us the time to have an audience with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are very much welcome to the village. And uh, we are obviously happy to see you around. Thank you so much. Um, maybe let's just touch base with what just recently happened. Um, being inducted into the South African Hall of Fame. Uh, you heard your speech. I, I reflected on it a bit in the paper um, this past Sunday. But what does it mean? What, what does it represent for? not the Kaiser Chiefs chairman, for a black South African who was able to build something out of nothing? Uh, I think in short, it's a, it's a dream come true. But also, I must say that uh, I feel greatly honored because <clears throat> this is actually uh, an indication in, uh, that uh, the little bit that I contributed towards the communities and society at large, uh, especially through sports, through soccer, has actually made a real mark, and that uh, you know is very, 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 very much uh, appreciated. The recognition itself, mm-hmm. that's you can't put value on that recognition on that kind of thing. It's it's, it's just impossible. But uh, I'm very, very, very grateful and thankful to those who came up with the idea, yeah, the, the, the South African Hall of Fame. And uh, I really, really uh, will cherish this moment uh, in my life. You know, I, I look at who we are as a people, as black people, and. Uh, unapologetically so. I, I look at where we come from as a country in terms of a history, in terms of when the apartheid system, if I may cut it there, placed us in terms of a station of life. I think Hendrik Verwood said that we, we were only good enough you know, to be hewers of wood and, and throwers of water. Uh, the, the, the conditions were not conducive for someone 
who is black like me, like I have more melanin than you. But uh, for black people to, to, to create things, to own things, to build businesses, to be able to start this uh, uh, and see it manifest coming out of this, or those conditions. Talk, talk to me about that. I think we all have to understand that uh, we are all a creation of God as human beings. And no human being can actually uh, undo what God has, has, has uh, in terms of your plans, because God has plans for all of us. And God has give, given all of us uh, a gift, and it's up to any individual to find out exactly what is his, uh, his gift from God accept the, the, the gift of life, but anything else that uh, goes in, into your life's journey, it's probably predetermined by God because uh, He's got the powers for everything. But I think what is important is that uh, we as human beings need to understand that uh, life is a journey and that uh, we need to navigate through this journey and, it, and life is, is full of challenges. And maybe those challenges are the ones that make it, make it easy or make, make it possible for people uh, generally to be able to navigate and find their, their real uh, <coughs> gift from God. How did you navigate that journey? It must have been difficult. I can imagine, I mean, I. I was born in the 70s, I grew up under apartheid, I understand apartheid. To be able to venture into the terrain that you ventured in, what were those challenges? What were those difficulties that you encountered? Well, all those challenges that I encountered uh, are those were, which were encountered by each and every black person, especially in this country, mm -hmm. because of the kind of uh, uh, life which was obviously being uh, crafted by the white uh, white so, 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 pe people who were running the country at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, as life goes on, we become more wiser. And as it happened, obviously, everything, like I said, life is a journey. Everything has got its own stages in life. There came a time when those who were there before us suffered even more than us. But uh, we were able to make things change until we got to where we are today. So it is all about believing and understanding that uh, life is all, f all about challenges, whether good or bad, but it's all about challenges. And one has been given the brain to also think of how to confront issues that uh, would maybe retard your progress. So I was, I can say I was very fortunate mm -hmm. that I, I grew up in, in those, 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 uh, those times when things were unfolding for a better future. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I also, in a way, small way it, it might be, made a contribution towards the change itself to, to make us a normal country like we are today. So it is all about uh, giving and helping one another as, 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 as we grew in the communities. Obviously, we were forced to be confined in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But that opportunity, that, uh, that, that time that we spent, obviously, we used we use it fruitfully in terms of thinking and doing some of the things that uh, we're able to contribute towards uh, alleviating the problems that were facing us at the time. What comes to your mind when you think of examples of difficulties that you encountered in your journey? <laughs> One of the things <laughs> which, I, which comes to my mind, it always comes to my mind is when at one time, we were driving back from town with my <coughs> Kaiser Junior, and he was still a young boy. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, there were these roadblocks on the way. And obviously the African police policemen were doing whatever they were doing, but obviously uh, their manner of approach and the way we were dealt with was demeaning uh, towards the black people. What, what was that manner of approach? How did they deal with you? I mean, like when you come out of the, they stop you, you come out of your car, they say you must put your hands there and say, where, who are you and where you are going and all that in front of a little boy who does not understand what mm. is happening. Mm. It was some of those things that were demeaning in character, in, in our character, by the, by, the, by the forces that were in play at the time. And many, I can quote many other instances where we obviously were subjected to embarrassment Please situations. <laughs> <laughs> so many, I cannot even start with one, but we all know we grew up during those times when we were made to be to understand and to believe that uh, we are we are subhuman, and therefore we subjected to to the whims of the uh, of of of, of, uh, <coughs> of the ruling uh, 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 people of this country which was obviously the apart apartheid regime at the time. You know, I'm, I'm insisting on an example simply because, you know, with time, there could be examples of what happened to you back then that somebody who's going to read this interview in the Sunday Times or, or, or watch this video that Tavo is complaining and be inspired by the fact that even Kaiser Mutawung Senior himself went through a difficulty and he persevered and was able to put himself to where he is today. Okay. Another example, apart from being stopped when you're traveling with Kaiser Jr., you were driving what, a, a Buick by then? No, I was, uh, the, time, the time I was driving a, a, no, it was, it was a Mercedes, I was driving a Mercedes. Mercedes yeah. Yeah. Earlier, earlier I was driving, a, 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 before that I was driving a, 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 a Mustang. Mm. Any other example? Well, talking about cars, obviously the first thing they ask you when, when they stop you with a car, they say, whose car is this? Mm. Mm. And that's, that, that, that's how they, they used to greet you. I remember also when I came back from Atlanta one time uh, at the airport, <coughs> the, the guy, the first uh, Police guy I met uh, who, who who met me coming out of the plane. Actually, when he's, when they were in fact when he got to the to to the Arava Lounge. Yes. Before I got out there, he said to me, uh, "Who who are you and what 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 do you think you are? Because I see there's a lot of people waiting outside here for you. And who the hell are you? I mean that kind of approach." was something that uh, was not welcoming yeah. coming back to your own country yeah. Yeah. when you are actually excited and looking forward to meet your people out mm. there mm. so so those are some of the things that uh, would obviously make you feel demeaned by the, the, the kind of treatment you get 